Hey everyone, welcome to another ranking, and here's my ranking of Danny Boyle's movies. Yes, just a few weeks ago, the movie T2 Train Spotting came out, and I did a review of it, and I enjoyed the movie, and I thought to celebrate that movie, I'd rank all of Danny Boyle's movies, because I haven't talked enough about Danny Boyle, because I'm a big fan of Danny Boyle, I love basically the majority of his movies, and I thought I'd just rank all his films from my least favorite to my favorite. He has 12 movies, so let's get to it. Here's my ranking of Danny Boyle's movies from my least favorite to my favorite. Alright, coming at number 12 is The Beach. This is the only movie I can actually say, out of Danny Boyle's, all of his filmography, that this movie is utter shit. I love all his movies, but this one. Actually, I don't love all his movies, but I at least enjoy most of his movies. This one, I don't. I think The Beach is so pretentious, so boring, so dull, it doesn't make a lick of sense half the time. It's unique, it's original, I give it that, but when you have Leonardo DiCaprio and, like, Tilda Swinton giving awful performances, you got a mess of a movie. This movie is a mess. It goes absolutely nowhere. Again, it's dull. It's derivative. It's pretentious. It's just a god-awful mess. Hands down, one of the, hands down the worst Danny Boyle movie. I don't think anyone can debate me on that one. I think everyone can agree with me. The Beach, worst one. Coming number 11 is A Life Less Ordinary. This movie is actually critically panned, and I kind of get it. It's not that great, but honestly, it's not that bad either. Cameron Diaz, Ian McGuigar, Cameron Diaz, again, I'm not a Cameron Diaz fan, unless she's in, in her shoes or being John Malkovich or The Mask. I'm not a big fan of her. But Ian McGuigar, Ian McGuigar is great in every Danny Boyle movie, and this is no exception. I think he's great. There's good comedy. There's good thrills. And again, Cameron Diaz, again, because she has to lead the movie with Ian McGregor. She is a big letdown. The movie also is pretty clunky at times, and some of the trippy feels don't really feel, like, very creative, like most of Danny Boyle's thrills and trippiness. This one kind of feels off-putting at times, but the movie's still good. It's at times engaging. I actually don't mind this movie. It's not a great movie, but I don't mind it. Coming to number 10 is Trance. Yes, Trance is another one. Again, I don't mind this movie. It's not great, but it's not bad. Again, it's part of those, one of those trippy Danny Boyle movies that's more of like a one and done. It's kind of off-putting at times. It's definitely not a movie I would ever watch again. But for the one-time watch, it's fine. I like James McAvoy in the movie. I like its story. I love its dark comedy. It works for me. That's all I gotta really say. Trans, it's not a great movie. It's pretty off-putting. It's not at all watchable, but I still enjoy it. Coming number nine is Millions. Yes, Millions. I know I should some people probably gonna get angry that I put it like this low on the list because so many people that I have talked to about Danny Boyle's movies. A lot of them say this is like their favorite and stuff, and I don't get it actually. Uh, I think I went to this movie a little too hot because people were praising this movie. I only watched this movie literally a few months ago, and people were saying this movie's so good. It's one of the best kids' movies. Danny Boyle did kids' movies like when Scorsese did Hugo. Oh, ooh, is it as good as Hugo? That sounds pretty awesome. And people explain the story. It's about this kid who gets these millions of dollars and stuff, and how he spends it and stuff. It's this very mature kids' movie. I'm like, I'm really excited for this movie. Like, it's got a train spotting humor, but it's also got that kid-friendly feel. I'm like, cool, sign me up, it sounds awesome. I watched this movie. It's fine. I liked it. It's nowhere near as amazing as a lot of people built it up to be. The performances are all pretty good. The lead kid's are not bad. There is some pretty good comedy. I do like the story. It's very unique. It's very original, but... Again, it's nothing that brilliant. It's nothing like that wowed me or anything. It's damn. It's nowhere near as good as Hugo. I don't know why people were comparing it to Hugo. No, what more, more than Scorsese did with Hugo was absolutely brilliant. What Danny Boyle did with this movie was different. It was more safe route, and again, it's more of Danny Boyle's style. Martin Scorsese had to go a different style with Hugo, which made it better. This one's the Tan Danny Boyle style, but it's a kids' movie. Kids can watch it too. At times, I, there's even some things I don't think kids could even understand, but the movie's fine. I did like it. It's just not this big, amazing movie that a lot of people built it up to be, but it's still fine. Coming to number eight is T2 Train Spotting. Yes, I just did a review of this, so I don't really need to talk in depth about it. I like this movie. Again, I gave it like a 7 out of 10. 
I thought, I thought it was really good. at that dark comedy, like the first train spotting. But it was nowhere near as good as the first train spotting. Ian McGregor is back. Ian Brenner is back. Johnny Lee Miller, Robert Carlyle. They're all back. Their characters are great. They all give great performances. There's that cool dark comedy like it is in the first one. But it's not as unique or as interesting or as funny as the first one. It's still very good. It may be a little too little too late. Maybe if the movie came out a few years ago, it would have been more relevant. But the movie's still good. It's still fun. It's still watchable, but not as best. Coming to number seven is Shallow Grave. Shallow Grave is a fascinating watch. This one has uh, Hugh McGregor and stuff. And again, this is a weird movie. This movie starts off as a comedy, a dark comedy. Then it turns into this really violent thriller. And I'm like, whoa, this, this movie goes weird and dark and I kind of like it. It's pretty awesome. The movie's about these three roommates, they're looking for a fourth roommate, and they find one, and the roommate ends up dead, but they end, when they find his dead body, they find that he has all this money and stuff, so they get rid of the body and take the money, but then they find out the money was owed by all these mobsters, and one of the roommates had to hack one of the hack the body up, so he goes all twisted and crazy and wants to kill everyone and take the money and stuff, and it turns into a big bloody mess of a climax, and it's pretty awesome actually. The dark comedy works, the violent scenes are really disturbing, but like kind of interesting to watch, and how this movie unfolds, and the big twist at the end, it's not only really a twist, more of a review, but it's really well done, I really like this movie, it's a very weird and crazy movie, but it's a damn good Danny Boyle movie. Coming number six is Sunshine. Sunshine is such a great science fiction film. Everyone says it falls right apart in the third act. It does not. In my opinion, I don't think the movie falls apart in the third act. The third act is definitely not as good as the first and second act, because the third act is more of like a horror movie, like the fucking burnt body and everyone trying to kill each other and shit. Like, the first two acts is more of a great, interesting, atmospheric science fiction film with these characters. That's the that's the movie everyone loves. People hate the ending. The last, like, 25 minutes. I enjoy the last 25 minutes. I think it's good. It's just nowhere near as good, and it's tonally inconsistent from the first two acts. Even though I still think it all works out as a whole, I love Danny Boyle's direction, and I love the performances as well, like Silly Murphy and Chris Evans. But again, yeah, the third act is a bit of a mess, but I still like the movie as a whole. It's a really good movie. I always thought, like, can Danny Boyle do a good, straight-up science fiction film? As it turns out, he can. He can do a really good job of science fiction. I actually hope he does more sci-fi films in his later filmography, but who knows. But this one, damn good movie. Coming number five is 28 Days Later. 28 Days Later is such a great survival zombie movie. 28 Weeks Later is not directed by Danny Boyle, but it's still a good movie. But this one, fantastic. Cillian Murphy's amazing. Brendan Gleeson's amazing. Naomi Harris is amazing. I love how this movie is so creepy, so edgy, so trippy. And it's a great survival movie. And hands down, this is one of the best zombie movies out there. It is so well done. And it's not like comedy like Shaun of the Dead or just straight up campy horror like Night of the Living Dead. It is actually a genuinely great, interesting, character study, thought-provoking survival story. And it's done so well, so passionately, with lots of creativity, good characters, good scares, and just sheer edginess and trippiness and weirdness, and I love it. I love it. The performances, the execution, the structure of the story, everything but 28 Days Later works. It's fantastic. One of my favorites. Coming number four is Slumdog Millionaire. Yes, Slumdog Millionaire is a movie from time to time now it's been called Overrated. Totally get it. I don't think it's overrated. I think this movie is very good. I really enjoy it. I think it's a very well-directed movie with some great comedy, amazing drama. I love the story about this guy who goes on this Indian who wants to be a millionaire, and he won the million dollars, and they basically think he's a cheat, but then he explains how he knew all the answers, so the movie flashes back throughout all these points of his life and how he found out all the answers to all those questions, because all the answers came to him throughout his entire life. They all represent parts of his life and stuff, and it's really good. Very convenient, but still really good and interesting. A very good story. Dev Patel is really great in this movie. Danny Boyle's direction is really good. The writing, the pacing, again, the comedy and the drama balance perfectly together. Did this movie deserve to win Best Picture? No. Dark Knight did, but Dark Knight wasn't even fucking nominated for Best Picture. But again, I still think uh, Curious Case of Benjamin Button was a little better, and I thought The Wrestler was also a little better, and Doubt was a little better, but this movie was still really good. I still really, really like this movie. It's still one of the best Danny Boyle movies. 
Comment number three is Train Spotting. Train Spotting is a movie everyone loves. This is the Danny Boyle everyone knows, the insanity, trippiness, dark comedy, something Danny Boyle is amazing at. It's a great movie, interesting dark comedy about heroin addiction. I get all the performances, all the characters, everything about this movie works. It's sheer insanity, sheer amazingness. It's one of the best Danny Boyle movies out there. I love it. Coming number two is 127 Hours. 127 Hours was a shock to me because I never thought this movie would be good when the trailers came out in 2010. I thought this movie looked dumb. James Franco trapped under a rock the whole movie? That sounds stupid. The movie works. James Franco hands down gives the best performance of his entire career. He's so great in this movie. It's disgusting, especially in the third act. It's a great survival story. Learning about this character, how he has to cope with this rock on his hand, has to cut his arm off in the end. It's so well done. It's so well executed. So intense. So gritty. Hands down, my second favorite Danny Boyle movie. And my number one favorite Danny Boyle movie is Steve Jobs. Yes, this is a weird uh, choice, but Steve Jobs is actually my favorite Danny Boyle movie. As you saw in my top 10 best movies of 2015, this was one of my favorites. I love it. I love the three story, three different stories about the launches. And Steve Jobs is launching a new product for Apple computers. I love Fassbender's performance as Steve Jobs. Seth Rogen as Steve Wozniak. Kate Winslet. Everyone's fantastic in this movie. Aaron Sorkin's writing is fantastic. I love the dialogue in this movie. I love good dialogue movies. Everything about this movie is just done so well. It's a more calmed down Danny Boyle movie. It doesn't have the eeriness and trippiness like all of Danny Boyle's movies, but it's still a very well done, very captivating, dramatic biopic in a way. They don't go straight into Steve Jobs' life. It's about the launches, but they're fantastic. It's a fascinating character story with amazing dialogue, and a lot of people may disagree, but it's actually my favorite Danny Boyle movie. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of Danny Boyle's movies from my least favorite to my favorite. So in the comment section below, please tell me what is your ranking of all of Danny Boyle's movies from your least favorite to your favorite. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.